This is what Peggy's production sounds like. Extra three. You ain't never seen no paint that you want. How does he do it? I wanted to know, so I deep dive into every JPEG Mafia rabbit hole I could find. Here's what I learned. We'll start with point number one, sample choice. The choice of samples being used in Peggy's production can be split into two things. One, Dario Core. Peggy was heavily influenced by Dario Core in this project. To the normies out there who are wondering, Ken, what the hell is Dario Core? Let me break it down for you. Dario Core consists of high BPM, high energy. So if it's anything less than 160 BPM, you're not making Dario Core. Electronic or hyperbop influence sounds. And last but not least, high-pitched vocals of any pop songs or any vocals you can find. The three songs that follow these steps are Fentanyl Tester, which samples Milkshake by Kellis, Lean Beef Patty, which samples I Need a Girl Part 2, the last that I could find was Stepper Pigs, which samples NSYNC Gone. There are a couple of ways you can pitch your vocals up. You can either do it like this in Ableton, FL Studio users, you can do it like this, However, my personal favorite way to pitch things up is using Lil Alter Boy. For the broke boys, don't worry, I got you. This is a very good alternative. Using all the pointers I previously made, I made a beat that sounds like this. Just to break it down quickly, here's what I did. I sample Asha's You Remind Me, pitch that shit up by an octave, have it at 87 BPM or 174 BPM, so it's fast as boy and use overpowering synths and bass in my project. <laughs> to all Ableton 11 users out there, you can download the project file in the description. The next section in this sample choice point is that I noticed he uses a lot of live drums in his project. I've also noticed that he switches between trap and live drums depending on the sounds in the album. To the hip-hop music producers who have never used live drums in their beats, try it to change your game. You can find live drums in many different ways. You can download drum breaks on Reddit, Splice, or you can even create your own live drum sounds using plugins like VFD3 or Tempo. The next point I want to go to is no fidelity. First of all, let's get rid of all the arguments that the project is badly mixed. This concept of no fidelity has seen a rise in popularity among a lot of artists. The most notable example is Tiny the Creator's Ego. The album sounds crunchy. They are overpowered bass and synths. Even there, even as muddy vocals. Scaring the hose is no different. It's deliberate. In my opinion, it adds the flavor of the album. That doesn't make it objectively bad. I just think that if the mixing brings the message across to you to the listener, that is good mixing. And in this case, I believe that's what the purpose of this album was. Besides that, you can really even see the lo-fi s nature of the way Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia will record their vocals. There's no fancy equipment being used. They are literally just in a living room. Danny Brown's holding a laptop as he's recording his vocals. There's no proper soundproofing. Just two dudes in a house recording into a mic. So to the artists that think that you need expensive equipment, you don't. Last but not least, restrictions. Purposely limiting yourself or giving yourself restrictions can broth loads of creativity. Let me give you some examples. Phil Hansen, who specifically uses a style of art that requires accurate hand drawing called pointillistic style. The thing is he got injured and he got so pissed he left the art for three years. A shaky hand was what he got from the injury and because of that he birthed a whole new style of art. The next person I would like to bring up is Austin Cleon who is the author of the book Still Like an Artist. By the way, great book for any music producers or any like artistic creative people out there. I recommend you get it. First came to prominence with his newspaper blacked out poems. Working only with the words in the newspaper article, he then uses a marker pen to black out words to subtract the original message to reveal his own. It's honestly kind of like sampling, it's kind of cool. Which brings us to JPEG Mafia. Peggy has stated that he produced an entire project only on the SP44. There are many ways you can do this. If you can't think of any, here are two examples that I could think of. One, time restriction. Force yourself to finish a whole song in two hours or force yourself to finish a beat in like 30 minutes. Two, instrument restriction. So purposely limiting yourself to an instrument you are unfamiliar with and forcing yourself to make a beat out of it. This is a quick shout out to all of you who has helped me to pick the thumbnail for this video. Without you, this video would not be possible, so thank you. If there are any other albums you want me to break down in this sort of style, leave it down in the comments and I'll get right into it. That's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I have another video of me making a beat for JPEG Mafia. It's a lot more music production focused and a lot less points focused. So if you like those kind of videos, you can click that here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.